I'm Tom Ray from the band Lorenzo's Music, and this is the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. This is a show about meeting musicians and creators and talking to them about what they do. This time around, I meet with a startup that created a new music app. My name is Tanner Call, and I'm a co-founder and uh, creative director at Live Undiscovered Music, or Loom. I heard about this company because they are based right here where I am, in Madison, Wisconsin. When I first heard about them, the app was just getting ready to launch. I was curious about what it was, so I reached out to them to see if I could stop by and ask about it. They invited me to the building where they work downtown. We sat outside on the rooftop terrace so I could learn more about what the app does. Like, literally, because since it wasn't released yet, I knew nothing about it. The only information that I had was that it was a new music streaming app. So the whole thing was kind of intriguing because... I was asking questions, not knowing if they were even going to be relevant whatsoever. It's a music streaming service, but it's actually built on a standalone social network. So you can think of it as kind of a mix between, you know, Spotify and then like Instagram and Facebook. And we exclusively focus on emerging artists, you know, that tail end of the music. First of all, um, so we're here in Madison. Is uh, Are you from Madison or where? From the Madison area. Yeah, I actually went to Stoughton, which is about 25 minutes oh, south of really? here. Yeah. Did you go to school? Did this yep. happen in school? I went to UW-Madison. I'm actually just finishing up school. I have just a little bit of school left, but I'm actually going going part-time until I graduate because, um, you know, Loom is taking off much faster than we could have ever imagined. You know, we're really excited to that, and I, that's where I want to pour my my efforts into. And how long have you been doing this? Loom was founded out of, like, a UW-Madison based think tank. You know, all me and my buddies were all longtime friends. You know, we grew up together, went to high school, middle school together, college. And during our senior year, you know, this was the time we were all going to be pursuing different jobs, moving across the country. And we're like, let's do some research into industries. Let's really work it out. I feel like if we really pool our resources together in our minds that we can come up with something really special. And this all started probably about last October, so less than a year ago. We started researching industries that were growing really rapidly, but had antiquated business models. Businesses that couldn't keep up with the growth of the industry. And we were really, really shocked to find out that streaming was that that industry. Companies like Spotify and SoundCloud are really, really big, but they're losing money hand over fist these days. And the streaming industry itself is growing at 60% every year, but they still are doing really poorly financially. And we started doing more research, and we found out that a lot of this was you know, because of the way their business models are set up, paying these corporate record labels, but it's also from the frustration of their users. Some artists, underground artists, they'll put their music on Spotify and it'll just sit there. They won't make any money, no one's able to find it, listen to it. And the discoverability as a fan, it, it's hard to find new new music on Spotify with them just curating playlists of the, the same corporate music over and over again. It's hard to find that underground music. There are a lot of talented underground artists out there and people want to listen to them. The artists will just be able to create an account and upload their music like right out of the gate? Yep, the artists that are on the platform now have the ability. We send out the beta, they sign up, and then there's actually a panel on our website where they can start uploading music. It's been really great. We've had a lot of music circulations. There's been a lot of connections made already. You can already see people, artists starting to collaborate and stuff, and it's really cool to see. So there is chat involved in it or messaging, at least of some sort. A direct messaging feature hasn't implemented yet, but that'll be coming very soon. More of a commenting system right now? Yep, you can, like, an artist can upload a track, and then other artists can go on and comment on it. Hey, this is really cool. We should get together and uh, work together sometime. Yeah. Starting to see those connections. So that's that's really awesome to see. I think I read in a recent article about the collaboration feature has been something that someone said they didn't expect. Yeah. And, and that part's really cool because it is, I mean, with the Internet, the one thing is like you can reach tons of people with your music, but it's really hard to go like, oh, I'd love to do something with that person. Especially once we get that direct messaging feature in, it'll be a little bit more private. They can they can do things behind the scenes more. And it's really cool to see artists being able to get real-time feedback, which is something that they haven't been able to do on previous streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. You know, they upload a song, and as a fan, I can go on and say, hey, I really love your the beat or the the melody or that's what the artists have really been responding to mostly is that feedback. People like to hear that their stuff is good. No, who would have thought? We, we started thinking like, oh, we want to hit all these major music cities. We want to hit Nashville, Atlanta, L.A., New York, all these major music hubs. But then we started doing a little bit more research on how startups and specifically in the Madison area, like Eat Street, particularly how they scaled and um, 
competed with like bigger bigger markets that like they were competing with Grubhub and we're competing with these much bigger markets as well. And then we kind of changed it up a little bit based on their model. And that was start where you have your presence and grow from there. So we, we already have a very good presence in Madison. You know, we're gaining a lot of traction here. And from there, we're, we're starting to expand out to like Milwaukee, Chicago, the Twin Cities, you know, Ann Arbor, stuff like that, where we can get in there more accessibly, you know, mix it up more in those areas and then grow from there. So we want to kind of start at a central point and that's Madison and grow from there. What would be the thing that kind of inspired you to create this platform? I know you said it was on, uh, there were antiquated business models, yeah. but why would you choose music? That is a very tough one. Yeah, we as a group are just huge music lovers. We love music. We go to concerts all the time, always listening to music, always like trying to find new music, trying to be the person that finds the next coolest artist or the next big song, you know? Yeah. And literally when us as a group wanted to share music with each other, we would go onto SoundCloud or Spotify, mm -hmm. we would copy and paste the song link, and we would send it to each other in a Snapchat group. And it was extremely inefficient. In a Snapchat group, yes, oh, in a Snapchat. Funny. And it was so inefficient and it was a struggle and a pain. And music is a very social experience. How do we, we can make this such a more social, we can make a more enjoyable platform for everyone. And yeah. that's our social networking feature that's built on, you know, now I can go and just tag my friends in a song that I find right. rather than have to copy and paste a URL to a different app itself. And I like the idea of that. I really do. It, it, what about the... Um I'm trying to think of a good example. Oh, Allo. Google Allo. Now, say you were going to send a message in the platform that they were going, this is going to replace Hangouts, which it didn't, but or hasn't yet. Who knows what they're going to do. But if I sent somebody a message in Allo, it didn't necessarily have the SMS feature. But I'd send it and be like, oh, to respond, you need to download. I mean, is it something that's going to be platform-centric? So if somebody sends a link, like say I, I'm going to, I'm going to do worst-case scenario here just to give the example of what I mean. So let's say... I find a really cool song and I decide to, to send it to my father and go, here you go, and I send him the link from that. If he didn't have the app, would it go like send him to a web page, kind of like if you don't have Facebook, it will at least send you to a web-based component? Or is that even something you consider? Just something I'm spitballing out there. That's something that I ha we haven't really thought about really. We don't know exactly how every little component is going to work yet. Right now, our, our web platform is just like a website that's like a holding place before we actually get the platform integrated into a website yeah. and once that is integrated that then he would be able to do that but for now it, um, everything stays in app so once you're on the app you can still like tag people in links and stuff if you do want to direct someone to a different streaming site you can do that yeah. obviously we prefer if they stay in the app <laughs> But um, yeah, that'll be something that'll be coming down the road. Okay. And and I didn't, I wasn't trying to put you on the spot. It was like, I know that you guys are just going to be launching. Of course, you don't have all the bells and whistles figured out. So, but I was, I was just curious. And I love the fact that we kept the scenario of my dad is still involved in this in the conversation. I thought that was great. What about the concept of streaming monetization? Yeah. So our whole premise is that we use streaming as a means to an end for these underground artists so they can break into live entertainment. Mm -hmm. Around, I don't remember the exact figure, but like 80% of the revenue that artists made in like last year was off of live entertainment rather than streaming. They could get 10,000 plays on Spotify a month and get a check in the mail for $60 or whatever, but they could go out and do one show and they can make $200. Mm -hmm. And that's just one night. And so we're using streaming as a catalyst. So. There's a major local emphasis on our application. You know, there's a we have a following feed where you can go and see what all your friends are uh, interacting with, musicians they're listening to. But there's also a local feed, so you can see what's happening in your local area without even having to follow them. And we we put that in there so people could go on, venues included, and they could see who who's really doing well in the Madison area, and then they can use that bring them in. Oh, this artist is doing really well in Madison. We would love to bring them into our venue to open up for someone, and that'll drive liquor sales because you know this artist already has a presence yeah. in Madison, and you know the bars and venues only care about liquor sales anyways. <laughs> Actually, you bring up a good point that is relevant to me as of just recently. I had an idea for a live show. I had two ideas, but I was looking for local artists. There's no real way to do that. How would that work? Do they need to label that they're from there or is it? When you sign up for the platform, you'll, you'll put where you're from, but it also pulls your geographical location at all times. So if I go and fly to New York, I can still see what's going on in New York in the local feed. I like that. That's but cool. yeah, but also on our explore page, there's like a whole explore page where you can find like the highest ranked nationally, the highest ranked locally, who's trending nationally, what artists are trending locally, and it's all sorted. You can sort all that by genre. You can do songs, 
artists, events, media, and you can find everything locally, nationally. You can get very specific on where you want to find your music. How come you did go with the Loom name? Like, So I know there's the umlaut to make it the oo sound. Do you feel like you're always going to have to explain that it's not lum? That is exactly why we put the umlaut. Yeah, we, we love the name Live Undiscovered Music because it just fits in with everything that we stand for and everything that our application does. Yeah. And so we were going by the L-U-M, lum. It just doesn't sound good, you know. No. So we, we started calling it Loom, you know, and, you know, Loom Large. You know, there's a lot of, like, really cool things that you can do with that. We found out that everyone just started calling it Lum. So we decided to put the umlaut over it to try to get some more clarification. People are starting to catch on a lot, but, you know, we still get Lum once in a while. Was there a specific app or application that kind of inspired what you did with this? Yeah, I think there was a little bit of inspiration, but it wasn't like the apps itself that inspired us. It was the lack of app that inspired us. We thought it was really great, and we started doing all this research, and it turns out there's almost nothing that even comes close to what we're doing and make music a more social experience, and that's kind of... Um, where we came from with that. Are there going to be like videos and photos integrated in or are there already? Right now we have photos integrated. Videos will be coming a little bit after launch. But yeah, that will definitely be coming in. We already do have, you can take pictures right from the app and upload them onto the feed, your profile, all that stuff. So yep, photos are in right now, but videos will be coming very soon. So how did you actually, I want to say that I read that you guys won a competition, but I could be wrong. So I'm, I'm saying basically like, how did you fund this? When we started doing this whole process, the first people that we reached out, you know, were friends and family. We had a lot of interest from our friends and family. Um, that's where we raised like some of our money, but we also had some interest from some angel investors in Madison. So we got some like some of our money from there. We're actually just closing out our first convertible note here in the next couple of days before launch. I didn't know we had any angel investors in Madison. That's that's a new one to me. Okay, how do you find them? You know, you just got to spread the word and contact right. a bunch of people. Use, use, use the connections that you do have. So there was no sort of startup thing like that that you joined? It was really just kind of green roots, your own campaign sort of thing? Actually, we just, today marks the day that we graduate from the G Beta program. Oh, what's that? Yeah. So it's um, an accelerator program for startups in, they're in a bunch of cities in the Midwest, including Madison, and it's just an accelerator program for young startups, and they kind of connect you with, with connections that you need in the area, possible investors if, you're, if you need that stuff. We just graduated from that program. So what about copyright? Are you going to have people monitoring for like ID content tags or things like that? What I can say <laughs> about the, the subject is that if you have any questions about our copyright, there's an FAQ on our, on our website that you that. can refer to. And have you ever thought about, I know before we started, I talked a little bit about the Creative Commons licensing. Have you ever looked into something like that? Like WFMU out in New Jersey has a website called the Free Music Archive and the music is all under Creative Commons license so that people can download it and use it and listen to it and there's no worry about copyright. But they also have one that they created themselves for they'll do live in studios, kind of like KEXP does out in Seattle. But they put it under their own license, which is called the Free Music Archive license, which just means this version can be used by us, but it can't be used commercially. Or Have you thought about any of those kind of licensing structures. What I will say is I don't know all the ins and outs of all that stuff with our copyright and uh, legal, but we do have a very, very, very good legal team that is on top of all of that, and they're, okay. they've got us covered. We're okay, and then um, have any of you been in bands at all? Like, were, are any of you musicians, or is it really just music lovers? One of our co-founders has a, a little keyboard in his room, if you count that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of our interns actually is in a band called Shady Grapes here in Madison. Her name is Helen. Yep, she's their band is very good. Everyone should go check them out. But other than that, uh, we don't really have any other musically inclined co-founders, but we're music lovers, that's for sure. I actually really like the support that music lovers do put forward online. A lot of, again, like with the music blogs and stuff, some of them become really popular and help promote a lot of bands. So what is your preferred music genre? Right now, my preferred music genre is actually the, the EDM electronic music. Oh, you know, yes. it's actually one of the most rapidly growing music genres with the rise of music festivals and all this stuff. Yeah. It's really become popular with 
some of the younger demographic and stuff that really love going to these music festivals, listening to this EDM, electronic music, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. But I also still do love a lot of genres. You know, there's a lot of really, really great, talented artists on our platform already, and I've had a pleasure going through and listening to all the genres. And um, while right now that is the one that I'm listening to the most, I still definitely listen to a lot of the other genres. And uh, what about music festivals? Have you guys done any promotion or any outreach to music festivals? Yeah, we actually have been doing some promotion at oh, some music festivals. You know, we kind of went up to uh, Summerfest in Milwaukee, and that is has a lot of our target demographic there. You know, a lot of high schoolers go up to that. We started talking to them, and they love the idea. So, yeah, music festivals are a big thing for us, is going as fans to listen to music, but also it's been a great way to spread the Loom vision. And we went to Lollapalooza a couple weeks ago, you know, walked around, talked to a bunch of people, possibly setting up some things where we can maybe table at these in the near future, set up a booth or something. But, yeah, it's a great way to reach our tar target demographic and spread Loom's vision to the world. Yeah. I do like that you uh, networked, but you were also just like, but we were really just going to Lollapalooza. <laughs> we, we came for both, for sure. I definitely wanted to catch a few shows if I'm paying the money to go there. Since this interview was recorded, the Loom app was officially released, and you can check it out at liveundiscoveredmusic.com. Problem is, I have an Android phone, so I still haven't been able to check it out yet. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to this podcast at lorenzosmusic.com, where you can also check out our music and download everything for free. On the next show, I'll be talking to a musician that reached out to me to be on the show who lives on the West Coast. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk with you later.